and I will talk about introduction of paper chromatography. So paper chromatography is used to separate a sample mixture into its own individual component. So the paper is hung and the end of the paper strip is dipped into a solvent. So what type of separation is paper chromatography? So paper chromatography is a partition chromatography, liquid-liquid. So the mobile and the stationary phase is both liquid. So what does paper chromatography is used for? It can be used to identify and separate the color mixture into its own pigment. It also can separate a polar compounds into non-polar and non-polar compounds. Assalamualaikum, my name is Anis and today I will talk about application paper chromatography in food industry. Paper chromatography often used in the food industry by the producer for food analysis. The food produce needs to undergo the quality control process. So, paper chromatography are used for the quality control process. Paper chromatography were used to analyze food additives and identify any contaminants present in the food produce. Paper chromatography are important for the quantification and identification in the food industry to ensure that no non permitted calorie agents are added to the food. The types of paper chromatography that was used in this video is ascending paper chromatography. Ascending paper chromatography is when the developing solvent is found to be moving in an upward direction. A sufficient quantity of mobile phase is poured into the development chamber. Sample and reference are spotted on the line drawn a few centimeters from the bottom edge of the paper suspended from a hook or clip at the top. Hi, I'm Ifa. For my part, I'm going to talk about the theory of the paper chromatography. So firstly, the stationary phase is the phase that doesn't move and the mobile phase is the phase that does move. The mobile phase moves through the stationary phase, picking up the compound to be tasted. As the mobile phase continues to travel through the stationary phase, it takes the compound with it. Thus, as the solvent moves, the components in the mixture also move depending on the speed. This way, the component is distributed between the mobile and stationary phases. In this chromatography experiment, paper chromatography will be used to separate and identify dyes present in various food or in products. When you place the mixture on the filter paper, the mobile phase molecule tends to move away from those who retain in the stationary phase for more extended periods. The ratio of particles in the mobile and stationary phase in a region is directly proportional to those particles' concentration. This phenomenon is called the partition coefficient and is the foundation upon which chromatography is performed. After you introduce the filter paper sample, different molecules travel up the paper in the direction of fluid flow at different rates. Chromatography paper is made of cellulose molecules which contain polar water molecules trapped between the fibers serving as the stationary phase. As solvent rises up through the paper, it meets the sample mixture which starts to travel up the paper with the solvent to separate the component. Non-polar compound is weakly held or retained towards stationary phase. Travel further with the mobile phase, the compound with elite first. More polar compound is strongly held or retained towards stationary phase. Travel slower with mobile phase, the compound with elite later. Assalamualaikum, I'm Shakina and I'll be explaining about the methodology. So, in this experiment, we'll be using materials like filter paper, beaker, paper valley 500 ml, food coloring pens, pencils, developing solvent, lid, and a ruler. In this video, let us see how to separate the inks in different food coloring pens by using paper chromatography. Firstly, use a ruler to draw a line approximately 1.5 cm from the base of the filter paper using a pencil. Don't use a pen, as pens contain dye and it will ruin the chromatography. Next, draw 6 small X on the line and about 3 cm equal each one another. This is to ensure that the spots will not collide with each other. Now, apply a tiny spot of each food color on the X mark. The spot must be small as possible to prevent smudging when the dyes are being separated. Do not forget to label each spot with labels of the food color used. 
add a small amount of sodium chloride. In this case, sodium chloride is our developing solvent. Put the paper inside the beaker, ensuring that the solvent front line is above the surface of the developing solvent. Also, ensure that the paper does not touch the beaker. Immediately, put a lid to seal the beaker. This reason is because we need to minimize the evaporation of the solvent. Observe the position solvent front for every few minutes, and also observe the six spots begin to separate into bands of colors as they move upwards. When the solvent front has reached to 2 cm from the top of the paper, remove the paper and immediately mark the solvent with a pencil and record the RF values. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur Ain Arina. I will explain the result. Okay, the result. We observe that most of the food color used separated into different color except for the yellow which remain a pure color without separating. This suggests that yellow is a single pigment that doesn't combine with other pigments. On the other hand, color like red, green, brown, blue and black separated into multiple pigment as indicated in the table. For example, red separated into two color which is red and yellow. Green separated into yellow, green and blue. Brown separated into red, green and blue. Blue separated into magenta and blue. Lastly, black separated into magenta, pink, green and blue. During the experiment, the solvent travel a distance of 75 mm for all the spot and the distance traveled by each spot is provided in the table. With this information, we were able to calculate the RF value for each spot using the formula distance travel by spot divided by distance travel by solvent. The RF value obtained were as followed. For the red spot, the RF value is 0.46 for red pigment and 0.69 for yellow pigment. For the green spot is 0 0.48, 0 0.72 and 0 0.75 for the pigment yellow, green and blue respectively. For the brown spot is 0 0.49, 0 0.75 and 0 0.76. For the blue spot is 0 0.3 and 0 0.43. For the yellow spot is 0 0.51. Lastly, for the black spot is 0 0.430. 0 0.64, 0 0.73 and 0.91. This RF value help us understand the relative movement of each pigment compared to the solvent. For conclusion, in a nutshell, paper chromatography is a powerful and simple separation technique that has many applications in various fields including the food analysis. It is a versatile technique that is simple and inexpensive as it can be performed with basic laboratory equipment. It also a non-destructive analysis as the sample can be recovered after the analysis and provides rapid analysis of a mixture. Paper chromatography also has high separation efficiency due to its high surface of area of the filter paper and the ability of the solvent to penetrate the paper and interact with the compounds. However, it also has its own limitation such as it cannot handle a large quantity of sample in the same time. It also cannot separate a complex mixture and the analysis produced are less accurate than HPLC. Just for a minute.